Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Hope you're having an awesome day. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to hang out with me. Today's video, I'm sharing with you my April Shop My Stash. And I will link my Shop My Stash playlist to watch previous Shop My Stash videos. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and give this video a like. Let's get into it. So how I've been doing my Shop My Stash is I've been choosing a crap ton of products each month. And I have some products rolling over from February. I feel like it's kind of pointless to go on ahead and put them back in the drawers when I didn't even test them. So I keep like a running list of rollover products. They are separated in this little pocket right here. But with March Shop My Stash, I did terrible with and because I was reaching a lot more with my project pan products so I definitely have a lot of more rollover products than I had actual products I picked out sadly I still not have tried these beautiful brushes that I received in one of my glitz glam boxes a few months back they are by the brand LA Beauty Soy they're super soft super pretty I love purple this case is everything I do have to clean my brushes so maybe while they are drying these brushes will shine for Eyes, I tested out these two palettes in my March Shop My Stash recap and I want to explore with it a little bit more. When I was creating my look during my recap video, I was not feeling the top portion of my eyes just using the matte shades. I ended up using the shimmer, which the shimmer definitely helped salvage the look. But I feel like maybe a hot fudge and double scoop pairing those two on a more broader level than just using this on the lower lash for a pop of color could be worthwhile. I think this palette was on the chopping block. I bought it just because I have every other Juvia's Place palette. Probably not the best reasoning, but I'm just a huge fan of Juvia's Place as it is. And I felt like my collection wouldn't have been complete if I didn't have this. And I was contemplating on depotting the shimmers and keeping them at least. And then I also chose out the chocolates palette, which I have not used yet. I definitely can see myself getting some really good use out of this palette for more neutral looks or being paired with colorful palettes as well. Two eye products that did not get used during my March recap. I have this Saint Lux eyeliner. I am very scared to use it because it looks rough as shit. When I did a swatch when I got this in Boxy Premium, it hurt. I'm afraid that it's gonna hurt and irritate my waterline and causing my eyes to water. And then I have the Milani Supreme Coal Pencil. This one's really nice because it retracts and it glides on really nice on the waterline. So it's pretty much the complete opposite of this. This also needs a sharpener and I lose my sharpener easily. It will make me sad if I have to declutter this right away because there is so much product on this pencil that I can get so much use out of but my eyes are really sensitive as it is and I'm not gonna put them through it just because I don't want to waste product I hate being wasteful I want to be able to repurpose or salvage something before getting rid of it that's where I struggle on declutters I want to get my money worth out of it I want to get the product worth out of it I didn't really choose a mascara this is the big ego by Tarte it's on its final leg so it'll probably get moved to project pan so I feel accomplished in my project pan so many lip products I have have this queen liquid lipstick that I got in a boxy charm I am a little afraid that this shade might be too light for me I like the formula I got a more mauve dusty rose shade that I really really like so I want to see if I can make this shade work maybe with a gloss or a lip liner I also have this really bright glam light lip gloss I feel like this is a very fun shade for the spring I do enjoy the glam light gloss formula I just haven't tried this shade yet and then I have a manica dar I think this is a liquid lipstick yeah it's kind of the same situation as the queen but I just hope that it works out maybe it will need to be paired with a lip liner or gloss as well and then I have the matte version of hello stranger I have the cream version that I use very regularly I had to have a vampy lip you never know when a look calls for a vampy lip <laughs> even in the spring and then the combination that I used in my March recap nature cartel lipstick it's wiggling and it's tube it's slightly broken probably because I was struggling applying and I use the Gerard cosmetics gloss this is Patty Prince I actually have it over this dose lipstick today. It is just a beautiful gloss that makes your lips look so full, juicy, and it is not a sticky gloss. It's funny because I'm not as much of a gloss person anymore, but I'm slowly getting back into wanting to use more glosses with this gloss. Which we have another one from the Ofra Samantha March collab. I was obsessed with this shade. This is Story, and I'm a huge fan of Ofra's liquid lipstick formula. I think it wears nice throughout the day. It has very little transfer and 
They're just so pigmented and beautiful. I think it will pair nice with the Gerard Cosmetics gloss, but I also chose out the Millie gloss that was also part of the collab. It's funny because the gloss looks super sparkly, but when I put it on, like the sparkles disappeared, but it still gave like that really nice gloss effect. So I want to try this with some of the other lipsticks and just see how they look. I picked out five primers for whatever reason. <laughs> One of them is returning is the Farsali Liquid Glass. I hated this by itself. It was really making my makeup break in my trouble areas. So I feel like it needs to be paired with one of these primers that I picked out, which is the Wet n Wild Prime Focus Prime Serum. This was okay by itself. I think it needs just another primer together. So I guess it's like the same situation as Farsali. My goal is to choose one or the other. I feel like the Wet n Wild one is gonna win. I don't know. I feel like I don't need both of them. I'm giving the Farsali one so many chances and I think I'm just trying to make Farsali happen when it's not going to happen. Moving on so I don't get stuck on that, I chose out two more tackier primers. This is the Wet n Wild Water Drop Primer and there is a coconut scent to it. The only thing I did not like about this primer was dispensing it. I felt like so much came out and it's just like a huge dispenser. I don't know why. You don't need that much primer, says the girl with dry skin. And then I also have this it Cosmetics number 50 Serum Collagen Veil. I bought this a while ago during a 21 Days of Beauty. It has been untouched and we are going to use it. It products are very hit or miss for me, especially in their makeup. So I don't really have high expectations for the product, but if it works out really well, I will be ecstatic. I also wanted to try this Morphe Priming Beauty Oil and I felt like instead of wetting my sponge, this is what I would wet it with instead. I know that used to be a popular trend back in the day. I don't know if people still do it. I feel like just using this on my face might not end well. So maybe pairing it with my Juno & Co sponge. Priming oils don't seem to be nearly as popular. The only other one I could think of is the Smashbox one. Also, I recently talked about this Flesh Beauty Foundation. It is unused and I feel like I heard mixed reviews about it. So I bought it to try it for myself never did a wear test on it so we are going to give it some love in the month of April. I don't know if I'm trying to make this concealer happen or if I need to prime my eyes with it but this is the NYX Born to Glow. It definitely pulls a little bit more yellow on me and I think it's going to be way too dark for this foundation so maybe I'll try mixing the two or this will just be some eye primer. I also picked out the Gerard Cosmetics Mystified. This is a really good pre-layer step that I like to spray my face on before going in with primer. This is a step that I don't always use since we are approaching warmer weather. It's like in the 80s this week. I just wanted to give it some love. I haven't used it in a while because I always find myself reaching for the pixie one. This Becca Hydra Mist powder is really good. I feel like the wet effect is slowly fading away because it has been open for a while. When I first got this powder, I was using it a lot and then I set it aside. Forgot that it has a very short shelf life for the wet effect. So I want to get the most use out of that because it works out so nice for my dry skin, especially setting the under eyes. This MAC powder, you know, it did not break me out. It's really old and I just want to give it some more use. I know, gross. We're gonna quickly move on before I get roasted in the comments. It was such a good powder back in the day and I just kind of forgot about this compact because that's when I started really getting into makeup. It got placed into the drawer of the forgotten and now it's here and I shot my stash. And then for another pressed powder, this is the Urban Decay All Nighter. I heard so many good things about this powder and I'm not sure how it's gonna work out. I went through a huge translucent pressed powder phase Phase. I haven't done it in a while. Normally I just set it with a powder foundation, exhibit A. So I guess we are revisiting old ways how I used to apply makeup. For bronzer blush highlight, I chose out the Samantha March collab. I have been obsessed with these. The bronzer duo is River and I haven't even tried them alone. I'm having too much fun just swirling the two together. I don't feel like the satin side is overpowering the matte. I think it gives a really nice bronze. The chiclet blush is one that I do want to try just the matte side alone and then maybe the satin side as a topper. I felt that swirling the two together it was a little too glowy for my liking in a blush. And this highlighter, holy crap, this was the most beaming thing I've ever put on my cheekbones. I want to do it some more in the month of April. And then these two are rollovers. The balm to me is very underrated. This bronzer in the shade Thomas is one of my absolute favorite. I think this is like the perfect bronzing shade for me. I'm so sad it's in a very tiny package 
packaging. And then I've been wanting to try the KVD Lolita Single Eyeshadow as a blush. I have seen it on some people and it's worked out super nice. So I wanna try it for moi. And then two setting sprays. I keep putting off this Far Sally one. I think it's just about time just to toss it because I never seem to reach it. It's been rolling over since February. And then I got the new Morphe Luminous Setting Spray, the matte one. Oh my gosh. If you need a matte setting spray, definitely check out the Morphe one. It was the maddest thing I have ever put on my face. I know it was a dumb move on my end because I am dry skin. I was not expecting it to be that matte though. So I'm a little afraid that this might be a little too luminous as we just talked about in the Chiclet blush that it was very glowy and I just don't want to end up like a grease ball using this. But we're not done yet. I still have a few rollover products. These are just rollovers from February. I have this It Eyebrow Pencil. These are are super waxy I get triggered because it reminds me of billion dollar brows which my brows never feel like billion dollars using it so I just wanted to see if this is worthwhile keeping because I am low on brow products is it worth the torture though and then I have this space case cosmetics highlighter it was super beaming on the swatch I just haven't used it on my cheeks yet this Tarte foundation needs some love <laughs> to set the face with I don't know how it's gonna work out I think it's like an in-between the translucent and foundation powder even though I think that this is technically the shade medium but don't quote me on that I can't find it on this old packaging and then this Aesthetica Be Bold palette definitely needs some love I definitely think that this yellow screams spring Easter I've only swatched it when I got it and I've been curious to see how Aesthetica's formula is at first this palette was speaking to me now that I look at it more I'm like does it really I think just like the blue green speak to me I feel like this palette is perfect though to create a neutral look on the top portion of your eye and then a pop of color on the bottom line. I really want to be better with Shop My Stash than I was in March. I was just so focused on Project Pan because I did pan out a couple of products. I got super excited. It kept the motivation going and I just forgot about Shop My Stash. I try to pair the two together. That way I'm not just using the same product over and over and over again. I guess I like that in March, which is something I do get bored of. So it was really weird, but I'm determined for this bag to get a little bit more love. I don't know, maybe Project Pan will take over again. So I was thinking my head Hmm. is February and now April gonna be the heavy yeah shop my stash months while March and May are gonna be the heavy project panning I guess for me I am struggling finding the balance between using both sets of products as well as incorporating new products that I get from boxes really haven't been shopping much due to the current circumstances but I do look forward to the boxes that I have for April to at least try some new products to keep things exciting and fresh even though I really need to focus on what I already have and assessing does it need to stay in the collection can I somehow sanitize it give it to a friend because I know Catherine is always eyeing some stuff in my collection that I could always pass on to her or is it just too gross and I can't sanitize it and it's just time to move on, put it in the trash, let it thrive in the dump with all the other products I've decluttered like Illamasqua Primer, BoxyCharm brushes, Facha, Zero Carat Gold. But I would love to know if you guys do shop my stashes and what is in your stash for April? Do we have any of the same items or similar brands? And do you shop your stash weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly. I like to do it on a monthly basis. That's why I choose out so many different products, but I think I need to be a little bit more disciplined with the fact that I keep rolling over products that maybe I don't need to pick out nearly as much, but I always find myself thinking that I'm gonna get bored, which clearly I didn't with my Project Pan. I need to find balance. But I am excited for these products. A lot of them are fairly new. Some of them I'm just giving 20,000 chances. Farsali, looking at you. I hope you guys are excited. And if I don't get through these products, we will do another April recap, just like how I did Marches. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. And if you don't, I appreciate your view anyways, and I'll see you in the next video.